Welcome back to 7investing now, or just welcome to this, because this is going to be two things. This is going to be a standalone show. It's also going to air at the end of an episode of 7investing now. So if you're just joining me, I am Dan Klein, and I'm joined today by Alan Sokoloff. He is a new member of our affiliate network. We'll explain what that is in a bit, but we've been going back and forth good-naturedly on Twitter for a while, and here's the premise of it. He is a fan of CBS Viacom. I am not. That's really dumbing it down because I don't hate the company. It's not one. It's just one where I feel that there are better opportunities. So we're going to play a game I call change my mind. I'm going to say why I don't like the company. He is going to tell me why I am wrong. I always end up changing my mind in the short term, but long term, <laughs> generally not. But Alan, before we get to this, first of all, welcome to the show. And Thank second you. of all, why don't you tell our audience a little bit about what you do and how you came into our orbit? For sure. Um, so first of all, I'm a junior at the University of Maryland studying finance, so still a student, uh, still learning. And um, I recently started a venture called Cruising Altitude that is a investment newsletter focused on educating the next generation of long-term investors. As you guys know at 7investing and everyone watching this knows, the market is quickly becoming a crazy place for um, especially Gen Zers and Millennials that are getting introduced to the stock market in a really weird way. Um, so what we are trying to do is to motivate Gen Zers specifically to take a long-term view in investing and to buy stocks and hold them for a long, long time. It's admirable work and it's really tricky because everyone sees what's going on in the market right now and they look, oh my God, I'll buy this, I'll sell tomorrow, when here's the reality. The stock market's actually boring. You buy good companies and you hold them forever. And I, I wish I was 20, because if I was 20, I would have a 50 year investing horizon. I could buy fairly conservative companies and let them build up. I didn't really start seriously investing until I was 40, maybe 41. So I was, I'm lucky I had some 401ks and some retirement investment, but the younger you are, so the work Alan is doing is something we really support. And we do that through our affiliate program. What does that mean? People who are in our sphere, people who we interact with, people who we know, not just anybody, uh, we give them a code. And if people join 7investing, which costs uh, $17 a month or $170 a year, they get a piece of that initial subscription. They also get ongoing money as long as that person comes a member. This is a major part of our business because we're looking for people that want this mindset. If you're, if you're looking at what Alan is doing, uh, you are already sort of in the same mindset as what we're doing at 7investing. Let's get started. We're going to play Change My Mind. So Good you time. saw <laughs> a, a ton. Viacom CBS. I always get the order wrong. Viacom CBS advertised. They had the Super Bowl and they gave up roughly $50 million. I'm going to guess that is the number in revenue by running endless, terrible commercials for Paramount+. Plus. So here is my angle. Yeah. Paramount Plus is just CBS All Access. CBS All Access had nothing. And when you're running commercials where your big celebrities are Star Trek, so like the eighth most popular Star Wars show is going to be 10 times more popular than a new <laughs> Star Trek movie. The Mandalorian is going to be a thousand times more popular. Star Trek is a mild draw, but okay, it's a name property. Then they had great tough to get shows like Beavis and Butthead. Those guys were super busy, really, really tough to get them. So I get it, SpongeBob, niche appeals to kids. You know what else doesn't matter with SpongeBob? New content, because kids age out of it, unless they're stoners. So kids age out of it. There's hundreds of episodes of SpongeBob that they could watch. They also got Dora the Explorer. Again, she's very, very busy exploring, tough, tough to come by. And here was the big reveal, Snooky from the Jersey Shore. This is not- and Both who else? Oh. DJ Allen. <laughs> but who's not doing anything on the platform. He was just in the commercial. So right. Basically, they're saying we're competing with Netflix, which just throws a billion shows against the wall to see what stick and spends too much money, in my opinion. Yeah. And more importantly, Disney, which owns Marvel, Pixar, Disney classic animation, and Lucasfilm, and produces nothing but hits. That is my core argument against Paramount+. Plus. Alan Sokoloff, changed my mind. Let's get it. So first of all, um, I think you make fantastic points. And those are points I think about when I um, analyze uh, my bullish thesis with Viacom CBS. And you were saying right when we were getting started that um, you wish you had an investment um, 
if you were just getting started as a 20 year old now, you'd be investing for 50 years. So that's the perspective that I have. And I see an opportunity that is much bigger than Paramount Plus. I'll talk about Paramount Plus in a moment, but I see a company with some of the greatest IP in the history of entertainment, including Mission Impossible, The Godfather, really quality stuff. Star Trek. A lot of people like it. You might not, but a lot. Of I know. I, I I do. I do like it. But a new Star Trek movie is a four hundred million dollar release. A, a new Star Wars movie, if done well, is a two billion dollar release. And I, I analyzed all the franchises once uh, for films, and the only franchise that they had that was a viable long term film franchise was Mission Impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And it's important to realize that Viacom, see, everyone thinks Viacom and CBS, and there's a lot of history and gunk with that, right? And part of my benefit of being a younger investor, I don't remember any of that. I was watching sports <laughs> when all of that was happening, you know? And, um, and I, I really analyze this with a fresh set of eyes. And what I see is a company with strong management, with Bob Backage, that is really looking to accelerate and become um, one of the new streaming players in the entertainment industry. And they're taking a really fascinating approach to this. They are uh, promoting Showtime OTT that they are keeping as a standalone service, service with fantastic content like Shameless, um, The Shy, I think it's called, um, and, and a lot of good stuff. Homeland just wrapped up there. They're, they're doing very well there. And then um, with Pluto TV, right, which I'm sure we'll get to also with. 30 million um, current uh, MA, MAUs currently growing um, like a rocket ship, as Baggage says. And then Paramount Plus, which is going to be um, the number one service um, that has live sports, breaking news, and a mountain of entertainment, as they say. So it's important to realize that they are really um, becoming, they're new. If you, if you view it with a fresh set of eyes, this isn't the old the legacy Viacom CBS. So I love Bob Backish. I think he's a good leader. I worry yeah. about the fact that Sherry Redstone actually controls the company. And she, the Redstone family has a reputation for doing outlandish things. I don't know if that died with Sumner, but they've chased away a lot of good executives. They also ignored some really bad content, uh, some conduct from some executives. Won't, won't rehash those stories. So that scares me, but it's, it's not a major detractor. We'll talk about Pluto TV at some point, but so live sports. If I want live sports, I can subscribe to Hulu Live or YouTube TV or Sling, or I hate to say it Fubo because <laughs> I have roughly the same package of live sports. If I get CBS All Access, here's what I get. I get whatever CBS has the rights to. So if I'm an NFL fan, it is not likely I'm going to be like, you know what I want to watch? Just AFC games. I only want to watch AFC games. I don't want to watch Sunday night football. I don't want to watch Monday night football. I don't care that much about the playoffs. So to me, that angle is overrated because if I like sports, that isn't going to be a game changer. If you said, well, it's a way to get the national nightly news uh, and you probably don't need all three of the national nightly news, that's something. Um, but I look at this as very much an add-on service, but what stops me from then going, well, I would also need Peacock. I would also need whatever ABC calls its service, which, you know, which doesn't really exist because they're part of Disney. Yeah. Um, and I feel like your best bet is just sling TV for 35 bucks. Like, like that makes a lot more sense. And you mentioned Showtime earlier. All of those shows you mentioned ended. <laughs> so Shameless is done this season. Homeland is done. And I'm not saying they won't create some good content but I do think they fall into the HBO trap where they're trying so hard to be a prestige content maker that right now, what exactly are you subscribing to HBO for? I subscribe because I watched last week tonight, which I know I could just watch on YouTube, but I'm too old to watch things on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, th that part, I really feel like, you know, the core thing is their cable network. So that's the best part. And you can argue some of their properties as, as being interesting, but I think the Paramount network itself is a real network. Quick, name three shows that air on the Paramount Network. Right. Um, I'm not going to answer that. Um, what I am going to do is touch on some of the earlier points you did make because I think there's a lot there. I view Sherry Redstone's holding in um, in Viacom CBS as a real asset. I think she ho uh, holds about 80% of the flow one one way through, through national amusements to make it even for more sure. complicated. For sure. That's powerful. You think that's incentive? 
you know, like for, for her to turn the company around. She, she is very much included under the legacy of her father right now. I really think she's motivated to leave her mark, the Sherry Redstone mark on the media industry. So that's one thing that I actually view as an asset. And um, in regards to, um, like you were saying on Showtime, all those shows are ending, right? Viacom CBS is quickly doing what everyone else is doing, starting to do prequels, right? The perfect example of that is Yellowstone, a really powerful um, series that they released that they're now doing a prequel for that will be an original on Paramount+. Plus. And it's important to recognize that um, the Super Bowl was just week three of a 14-week promotional, um, promotional uh, campaign to, uh, for Paramount+. Plus. They were focused there on saying the old content that we have. And I think on February 24th, Viacom CBS's investor, investor Day, you're going to see a lot of the new original content that they have planned, similar to Disney's um, Investor Day a few months back. And um, just, I think I can rattle off about 10 shows that will be originals on Paramount+, Plus, but I'll just name a few. There's going to be an iCarly reboot. There's going to be a behind the scenes of The Godfather. There's going to be a Criminal Minds, um, uh, um, what's, it, what's it called? Documentaries, a real life documentary. Oh, a documentary of a show only old people watch. But <laughs> I'm just... guess what? When you have, and then there's Sponge on the Run, Camp Coral. When you actually help me there. So you got old people TV shows, you got young, you got everything in between. And, and the potential is huge. Why? Because right now there's only 17.9 million paid subscribers, about 8 million for CBS All Access and 8.5 million for um, Showtime. They're just getting started. And um, the potential is huge, yeah. So, so what's your ceiling? So if I look at Disney+, Plus, I will, I will argue 300 million. That's where they, they will get to. If I look at CBS All Access, which is inherently an American product. So obviously there's money to be made in licensing some of these content, you know, the SpongeBob movie can be licensed everywhere. And that's a good model. I look at CBS All Access and say it could get to 30 million people. And that might be the ceiling. That to me, isn't that exciting. We'll talk about Pluto TV because that could be exciting, but do you, do you have a higher ceiling on this? There, there's um, about 85 I, I, million cable homes in the US right now and maybe that's hard to know. I, I'm probably almost as many that are cord cutters, but that's a really squishy number. Would you say 30 million or 300 million? Because so I'm, I, I said, I'm closer to 300 million. I'd say Disney, <laughs> Disney, CBS All Access can't get to 300 million. There aren't 300 million Americans. So, the white, well, there are. There are, 360, there are 360 million Americans, but there aren't that many American households. I don't see a global reach for a product based around US television. If you tell me 70, 80 million, that's basically close to peak cable. Peak cable was like 105 or something like that. We're at about 85 now. Gee, that, that's a lot. That, that, that's a lot of faith you got there. So Paramount Plus is already launched in the Nordics, I'm pretty sure. Um, so they are, and they also have plans to launch in um, other English speaking countries um, relatively soon. Uh, so they are not limiting themselves. They are really looking to become a international brand. And I don't think people are understanding that. And um, they already have huge distribution networks um, in all of these countries. And you can see that specifically with the success of Pluto TV. So I think it's important to realize um, that if you make content is king, right? As Sumner Redstone said. So if you make fantastic content, people will watch it. Some of my favorite shows on Netflix right now are in different languages. And I think we are really entering a new age of media. Um, and, and 300 million is a huge number. And, and it's important to recognize they don't need Paramount Plus to be a huge success for this to be a valuable investment. They're trading at $36 billion um, as the market cap. And they're doing in the mid twenties in revenue, making 3 billion in net income a year. And it's important to realize that this is a classical value play. We don't need Paramount Plus to be a grand slam. I think it can be, but we don't need that. So let's talk about content because there's a little bit of content fatigue. Now, I'm a Disney Plus subscriber. 
I'm a Netflix subscriber more because my wife and son use it than I use it. I haven't found it all that appealing. I have Amazon Prime, but not, I, I watch the boys, but I, that's not why I get Amazon Prime. They could get rid of Amazon Video. I'm still going to have Amazon Prime. <laughs> um, I am a Peacock subscriber because for the moment I have Comcast and I get it for free. I am an HBO subscriber because I like the, the DC Comics content. And I probably have like three others. I am so far behind on shows I want to watch that realistically, and, and my wife and I have different tastes. So my window tends to be when I'm traveling and there's not a lot of traveling right now. And when she goes to bed, I have a hard time keeping up with the one show I'm regularly watching on time, which is WandaVision on Disney Plus. I'm not sure. We, got, we just got Discovery Plus because I like Restaurant Impossible. I don't I even think- Restaurant Impossible. I don't even think I've logged in. And that has like hundreds of shows. Now my problem with Discovery Plus, which we're gonna talk about uh, on Seven Investing now soon, is that you don't get the linear feed and nobody's just like, I wanna watch Diners, Drive-Ins and Dives. They just <laughs> want it to be on. They just want Chopped in the background. Nobody right. seeks those shows out. So I yeah. feel like that's a fatal flaw. That's probably a cable rights issue. But I look at it and I say, there's nothing in the lineup for Paramount Plus. Like, like the one thing in the background of, uh, of NBC Peacock is they're doing a Battlestar Galactica reboot. And I love Battlestar Galactica. I haven't seen that show that makes me go, I need to have this. I think that's a pretty big problem. Like Yellowstone's not a big hit. It's a niche hit. Look, I also love Bar Rescue, which is a Paramount Plus property. Uh, but I don't know that I'm buying a network to get Paramount Plus. And I still have cable because my complex gives it to me. Yeah, I think um, to answer that question, let's wait till February 24th. Let's circle that date on our calendar. Um, where, I'm, I'm, looking yeah. for, I'm looking forward to Godfather Baby and, uh, <laughs> and, and all the other uh, Mission Impossible kids or like however they, they prequel these things. I, I'm teasing and I stepped on you, so I apologize for that. You're good. Um, and, and I think I want to hammer home the um, value play that is Viacom CBS. They don't need Paramount Plus to be a grand slam. They are trading at 1.1 times sales. And um, what I do want to add, and you mentioned this a little bit, cord cutting, right? When you actually look at the numbers, when you look under the hood of what is happening, Viacom CBS is growing their affiliate revenue for the past three quarters, it's been growing. I think 1%, 2%, 10%. The affiliate revenue should be where the um, cord cutting um, where the cord cutting uh, victim is. And it's just not there. Why? Because they are fantastic at signing deals with connected TV partners like YouTube TV, Sling, and Dish. And, and if that six, if that three, four billion a quarter is not going anywhere, why is this company trading at 1.1 billion, 1.1 times sales with a two and a half percent dividend? There's just a a, a mismatch there. So I sort of agree with that, that. Okay, we're getting somewhere. I, 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 well, I think we've had peak cord cutting. Um, the reality is a lot of people are coming around to wait a minute, wouldn't it be nice if I could just pay for one thing where I get all these channels instead of having all these individual things? Oh, wait a minute, that's cable. Um, right. so I do think like we're seeing in the cord cutting world, a move of people from full price subscriptions with your Comcast and your Xfinities to skinny bundles. And those skinny bundles are generally going to include CBS. Uh, and when it's in markets where it's legal, it's always tricky. It depends where you live. They are probably going to include MTV, Comedy Central, and Nickelodeon. So I don't think they're going to see big law. I think they're going to see some decline because there are absolutely people that say, I get everything I want from Netflix or just a couple of things. But I, I don't think you're going to see 10, 20, 30% drops quickly in the cable business. I think we might have seen the, the worst of it. And we're, I think we're starting to learn that there's some benefit in having a package. I, I, I have Sling TV. Oh no, I don't have Sling TV. I got rid of Sling TV. I now have the T-Mobile streaming television, which isn't on Roku. So I can't actually use it, but hopefully they will correct that soon. We have a second house and that's how we watch TV at that house. We'll figure that one out, but let's talk about Pluto. Yeah. So we're working on getting all of our content on things like Pluto. Uh, and I say things like, because the Roku channel is just like Pluto. The Twitter, uh, not Twitter, the TiVo channel is just like Pluto. So here's what Pluto is largely. It is every free thing that's out there. Some of that is good. So some of that might be professional content. 
uh, like a channel like Bloomberg, which doesn't have great cable distribution, so they have the rights to it. So it's on all those free platforms. It could be good content you don't know about, like Seven Investing Now, but a lot of it is That's alpha. Great. Not sure like, that a lot of it though is alpha free runs. And I understand they're growing and it's a great advertising business. A lot of advertising is moving to that self-help, but I wonder what the ceiling is when you and I today could start up a competitor. Now that's not gonna be that successful, but every company that's in the TV space could launch a product like this. And you're seeing more and more of them launch. There's gonna be some end to the hunger to watch Manimal reruns. Right. Um, I, I think the, the proof is in the pudding, right? That the growth, I think this past quarter, um, MAUs for Pluto TV hit 28.4 million. That's I think around, up around 10 million this year, obviously helped by COVID. And it's important to realize that this is a quality product that people love. The user experience, user interface is phenomenal. That there was just, excuse me, um, an article in the Wall Street Journal last week um, that said, we love Pluto TV. We don't want to come home and think about um, what we should watch. And what really makes Pluto TV unique is that is where they are showing season premieres of Showtime shows, the Paramount Plus show. So it fits in beautifully into the um, overall uh, CBS, uh, Viacom CBS ecosystem. And, and what people are talking about too, there's sports on there for free. You can find some good D1 basketball, lower end D1 basketball, but Viacom CBS at any moment can twist the heat up, turn the heat up, and, and put in NFL rights, UEFA Champions League, PGA, and C. Actually, actually, they can't. Um, the, the rights picture for that is super duper complicated. So well, the, the, I, yeah, those are that. all those, yeah, those are all gonna be sold separately. So uh, my brother's in this this space. Um, so I, my, you know, to, to give you an example, my brother did the Miami Dolphins Hard Rock Stadium naming deal and cool. all and all of their media rights deals. So media rights, could they buy rights to the NFL on that platform? Yes, but those are going to be very expensive. Where they can ratchet up the sports is what you were talking about. That sort of like I went to Hofstra. If you want to find televised Hofstra games, you you need a satellite dish and, and an explorer. That kind of content, a lot of which is also on ESPN Plus, that content's out there. Which There's costs a, money. Say that again? Which costs money. ESPN Plus costs money. Right. So you're going to see your fifth best professional wrestling association. Uh, they're going to be on there. And there is some value to that. Most of that is not proprietary. And I agree, the Pluto interface is a lot easier than the Roku interface for finding that stuff. I, I think there's value. I wonder where it tops out because I don't think there's a lot of great content on there. I think there's a lot of background content because clearly your top tier content is not gonna be on your free advertising supported platform um, unless there's a strategic reason for that like promoting a paid platform. And you might see things like you, you're seeing with Peacock where you get you know, a few episodes of The Office at a time for free. I'm not negative Pluto TV. There's just very little you can own with it. And going forward, I, I do think it's gonna grow. I think that more ad dollars are gonna go to that, but the rest of it, that's the part I like the most about the company. Awesome. The rest of it is I don't love their content. And, I, and if I'm making an investment and I'm going to invest in a company like Disney that is just the beginning of the growth story and doesn't have to spend as much money. There's gonna be a lot of failures in Paramount Plus. Disney has almost no failures. You, you mentioned iCarly. Well, iCarly is maybe the level of the, the spin-off show Disney has where the, the fork from Toy Story talks and you know it has an audience, it's gonna do well, <laughs> but that's minor content for Disney. So their ability to have hits, if I'm looking at the investments, that's where I'm gonna go. And when I look at CBS, I, I, it's investable. You've convinced me of that. I just see better places to put my money. But Alan, make your closing argument because I think you've changed some people's minds here. Great. Um, before I do that, if I may, um, Pluto TV, what about the international growth, right? That this past quarter, they went from 6 million to 7.5 million MAUs internationally. They've launched in France, Italy, um, Latin America in with um, local channels with the native tongue. And I think um, if you love Pluto TV and let's say that levels out at 35, 40 million MAUs domestically, 
you can see bigger than that internationally. And um, so, so to wrap up my closing statement, I think we are in the second or third inning of Viacom CBS, which is quite a statement because it's a really storied um, um, company. And I think like the management says, their best days are still ahead of them. And the reason for that is they are understanding what it takes to succeed in the modern world. Content is king. Watch out, they're coming February 24th. I think there can be lots of good investments that aren't the best investment in their space. So I would liken this to, for a long time, I, I liked Dunkin' Donuts as a public company but I just like Starbucks so much better that I had a hard time putting my, same, same thing with Panera uh, when they were public. Though Panera irritates me because I don't want to assemble my own coffee. Like just put the yeah. in my coffee. So you're watching Seven Investing now. This is Alan Sokoloff. He is one of our affiliates. Alan, how do people find your newsletter? Um, thank you for asking that. Um, there's a couple places. I think the easiest place is at Stocks Cruising on Twitter. Um, and then there, our link to our newsletter is there. Our newsletter comes out once a week. Um, we are growing as fast as Pluto TV, but without the revenue. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we, we, we're, we, we're up to something really special and we would love um, for the seven investing community to hop onto what we're doing. And, and well we can't say enough how happy we are to have your perspective because you know I'm the oldest guy in the seven investing team and I'm not that old, I'm 47 years old, but having all different angles and views on it, because there's definitely, I, I like to think I'm a very young 47 because most of my friends are, are, are young. <laughs> most of the investor, most of our team is, is pretty young, but there's things you're going to experience that I didn't experience. I'll give you an example. When I went to college and my brother went to Maryland, so I'm pretty familiar with Maryland. When I went to college, I had a phone card so I could make calls home. I did not, the cell phones weren't a thing. Uh, we had a cable package as part of our dorm and I did not have internet access. So your world is very different than the perspective I have on the world. And you might, for example, go out in a couple of years and start your own first household and getting cable may not be a factor. In fact, your internet provider may have to entice you to get a basic package of, so those are the things Alan's gonna to bring to our perspective as we go, the, the world in different ways. You're, I, this is, I'm sorry to be condescending here, but I was in college once too. Your perspective on, on food ordering is probably really different than mine because- 100%. <laughs> you know, getting a pizza quickly and cheaply is way more important in college than it maybe is as a, as a reasonably successful adult. So thank you for doing this. We are going to do this regularly. We appreciate you having you on. Thank you. Awesome, have a good day.